Hello everybody, and welcome to my Let's Play of Daggerfall. This will be a fairly casual role-playing LP of Daggerfall. My decisions will be based on what my character would do, and not necessarily on what I would do as a player. So what that means is even I don't know what my character is going to do yet. Now I've played a bit of Daggerfall before, uh, but I don't consider myself an expert. I keep learning new things about this game and its mechanics, uh, so a lot of it is going to be new to me. In terms of video style, this is going to be a fairly casual uh, video series because I'm really doing this for the fun. Uh, but I also like to do some video game coding on my own from time to time, and I would like to analyze what elements of a game help to make it fun or frustrating. And as some of you may already know, Daggerfall is kind of a unique mix of both. So, other than that, I welcome feedback on my videos in the form of likes, subscribes, or even constructive criticism in the comments, just as long as it's constructive. Uh, for instance, telling me that I'm too quiet or too loud or something like that. Because I might not necessarily know about that. So, uh, let's get to it. So... Now, I'm going to introduce you to the character that I'm going to play as in this LP. His name is Trist. He is a Breton warrior of sorts, and he grew up in a small village that was more or less neglected by the local lord. As a Breton, he comes from this top province up here, um, and he didn't really like it uh, because his village was neglected, and now he sees himself aspiring to nobility so that he can be fair to his subjects, unlike his past lord. So his goal is to somehow claw his way up to that. Now, he's not very smart or good at plotting, even though he thinks he is, and so he'll do some pretty extreme and questionable things to get his way in that regard. This mix makes him, sadly, very easily manipulated, when all is said and done, though, he will generally do things to help the common folk. Apart from that, he is a worshipper of Kinnereth, and when he's feeling conflicted, he'll go and pray to her. Now, there is one more important thing you should know about his past. Uh, one day, when he was an adolescent, he was traveling between settlements in his lord's domain, visiting a friend. And he was paralyzed and captured by some outlaw magic users. And, well, they experimented on him. They were trying to cure some of their buddies from a, a rare and unusual disease. And they had a bunch of possible cures, but they weren't sure if these would be harmful to their friends or if they would even cure the disease for that matter. So they decided to experiment on Trist first by infecting him with that disease. It was a pretty contagious disease. And then they tried these potions one at a time until he was cured of the disease. And he was eventually cured, but the combination of these potions had some permanent effects. And I'll talk more about those during character creation. Eventually Trist was able to escape and he made his way back to his parents but ever since, he is generally distrusting of magic and magic users. So, uh, let's, let's do it. Uh, so, I'll click on High Rock. I'm going to be a Breton. Bretons hail from the province of High Rock. You are part of a tall, fair-skinned people, highly intelligent and willful. Magic seems to infuse the very being of the Breton people. As a race, they are more resistant to the effects of hostile magic than any other group, and thus you are excellent in all arcane arts, even though he doesn't like to practice those arts necessarily. Is your character to be a Breton? Yes, he is. Select thy character's gender. He is male. Alright, so I can choose from a list of possible classes, or I can answer questions, uh, and this will let me... Uh, if I choose from the list, I get to choose a custom class. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll down to custom here. Okay. So this 
is supposed to be the class creation screen. It looks as though looks as though I'm selecting a skill. Um, can I exit? No. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this is the class creation screen. Uh, so first thing I do is I give my class a name. And Trist is a cursed uh, warrior, let's say. All right, so that's the first step of class creation. Um, now, as far as other things, we still have to go through the attributes, which are things like speed and strength, all that, uh, skills, so what he does most of the time, then uh, advantages and disadvantages, and I guess reputations too. So I'll go through that. Uh, so first thing, I guess we'll just go through the attributes one by one. Now when I bring it up or down, you'll see this, this counter here goes up or down. Um, as well. And what I have to do is if I take points and put them into something, I actually have to take them out of somewhere first. Or two. Kind of like this. So if I put five points into strength, which is STR here, then I also have to take five points away from something, like intelligence. So it could be any of these. Okay, so Trist is not a particularly hard hitter as uh, far as warrior style goes. He, he believes that he can be more effective if he's fast and agile. And that kind of plays into the whole Kinnereth worship thing. Kinnereth being the goddess of air, uh, moving fast and quickly. It's, it's, it's that kind of uh, that kind of idea. So I'm going to leave strength as it is. Now intelligence. Uh, I don't know what this does in the game exactly. I know it affects the number of spell points that Trist would have, but uh, he, we've already talked about Trist not being that smart, even though he is uh, highly intelligent and willful Breton hypothetically, he doesn't have high intelligence. In fact, I bring this all the way down to uh, 30 makes sense. 50 is average and 0 is uh, useless. And Yeah, I think 30 is pretty comfortable. Uh, and he doesn't have much willpower either because he is easily manipulated. No, willpower, I don't really know what that does um, in this game. I think it helps with spell resistance and maybe casting spells. I don't really know. Agility. Trist has agility. 60, that sounds good. Endurance. Uh, I'll give him a little bit of endurance. He's, yeah, strength and endurance aren't his his big thing, but he is a warrior, so it makes sense that he have a little bit of that. Personality. Uh, I don't see Trist as being particularly smart in conversation or necessarily... Um, necessarily being a good talker so I'm gonna bring it down a bit not too much just because of that speed yeah yeah 10 10 into that that leaves me 15 points here to distribute um this is luck but let's see I don't think there's anything else here that is really appropriate to receive points. So I think I'm just going to put these into 
into luck. Why not? And there we go. So that's the attributes. Now, as far as skills, he likes using long swords. So the skill for that is... Ah, I see it. Long blade. Pretty sure that's the, the right skill there. The next thing, he he is athletic and worshipping Kinnereth and Air, being speedy and agile, it makes sense that he's also pretty good at running. And that's a skill that he's going to be using a lot. He he runs everywhere. He's uh, He doesn't like waiting to get places. And finally, this one's going to be a little bit... a little bit interesting. He has actually studied the Magical School of Restoration. Now, I did say before that Trist is distrustful of magic and magic users, generally, but Restoration is a bit of an exception, and I'll tell you why. Restoration is used for healing people and curing diseases or poisons or other similar conditions. Trist sees this as a magic for good. He doesn't see how this could be misused to hurt people. And that's the reason why he studied it. <coughs> Excuse me. He also thinks that, based on his experience with magic in the past, being paralyzed and then experimented on, he's got this idea in his head that maybe the best way to fight magic is, well, with magic. And that makes sense. If he gets paralyzed, maybe he has a spell to help him with that, uh, to cure his paralyzation, or if he gets poisoned, or if he gets diseased or something. So let's move on to major skills. So these are ones he'd be using the most often. For major skills... Uh, let's see here. I think I think he would be pretty good at climbing places. That's how we would get around around a terrain uh, in training. He would have learned that a lot in uh, in fighting school. I'm sure, he would have also learned archery. So if he can't reach an opponent, uh, maybe he can snipe him from a distance. And what else could we put here? I think there's a swimming skill. So let's let's use that one. So he doesn't really like being um, having barriers in his path. So if he has climbing and swimming, he'll be able to get around cliffs or, or lakes or other things that block his way. All right, minor skills. So I mentioned that he believes in using magic to fight magic. He, to that end, he has dabbled in destruction magic. He doesn't like it. And he would keep this a secret if, uh, whenever there, whenever he has to. He... He doesn't like destruction magic, but he believes that it might be important if ever he finds himself fighting mages again. So I'm going to choose that school, that magical school, as one of his minor skills. And he's not proud of it, but he thinks it's he thinks it's necessary. It's a necessary evil. As for other skills here, I mean he's. He's okay at etiquette. Etiquette is important for climbing the social hierarchy of Tar uh, Tamriel. He knows about stealth and that it is sometimes important to be sneaky when places. He does prefer a straight, fa 
uh, with a, a long blade, but in some cases it might be important to use stealth and and getting him in behind an opponent and uh, well killing him stealthily. What else is here? Yeah, jumping. Might also be a useful skill. Tempted to say dodging. Is there anything else here that would be appropriate for him? No, I think I like dodging. Alright. So that is his skill set. 